Roger, you've got to go to the director's room, chairman's room. And I've been there seven years, I've been captain for three years, and I've never been into the director's room. So it says, where is it? Go to the top of the stairs, take a right. Walk in there, Billy Bingham and Chris Hassel, the secretary of Everson Football Club. Now I knew something was up there. There was no agents around at all at that time, of course. Jimmy Anderson, the manager of Bob Lloyd, didn't care to speak to me, but I think they pocketed the cheque straight away and that was it. They had to build a stand at Burnley Football Club, that was a basic end. But absolutely delighted. Billy was uh, a really cool negotiator as well. I think I was about 120 quid at Burnley, and he got me for about 150. Now, when I came into Everton Football Club, of course, when he speaks to Bob Blacksmith, hey, double, is that all you got? You should have had my man, you know, from Birmingham, that would have been it. Super coming into the football club, and um, but it's been embarrassing on this table, of course, because we've got legends who've won things, isn't it? You know, Big Joe, of course, winning as uh, the championship as a player, of course, with the FA Cup as a manager, Derek, of course, as well. And we've got us three or four here. Jim won a golf tournament one time, is that right? Like <laughs> but we did, but it was excellent in the 70s. We did have a terrific side, and that 1977 78 season, do you remember that? That was special because the great Bob Latchford scored how many goals? 30 goals. So, we, so the initiative from the Daily Express was £10,000. So we got Latchy in the dressing room over an ice bucket straight away and said, Latchy, we could do with a bit of this, you know. So being a, a great gentleman as well as a fantastic centre forward, he shared it out. foundation is to me very very unique and um, you know it's a pity that a lot of other football clubs don't get involved with it but you know that's their choice and I think that what the foundation do Harry and all this team uh, is quite amazing to think that they help everyone that either played for the club in now or in the future and um, but whether it will happen in future, I'm not quite sure. You know, you know, particularly with all the foreign players now. Um, let's hope it just keeps going, Harry. And, but I think there's massive changes in the game today, as we're all aware of. But um, my time with Bob and obviously Jim, Martin, Duncan, I must say we had a very, very good side. We finished, I think, third and fourth, I think, two consecutive seasons. We had Gordon Lee as the manager who had a lot of time for Gordon and Steve Burnshaw, the coach. Um, yeah, I had a really, really happy three years here. Unfortunately, I decided uh, to leave. I was under a bit of a contract dispute and obviously it didn't materialise. But I think looking back, I think I would like to have stayed longer. But that's football and that's the modern game. That, that was the game it is today. Well, go back, Dave, to when you actually signed for Everton. Go through what happened. Talk us through that. Well... I had nearly six years at QPR and probably you're aware that we had one of the best football sides that I've ever played in at QPR. We were very, very successful. Sadly, we didn't win anything and obviously you judge, but as a team of individuals and a team of players, we had some fantastic players, Stan Bowles, Francis, uh, Frank McClintock, Dave, well, I mean, Johnny Holland, it just like rolled off and we were a very, very good side. Sadly, we got Picked by the opposition, Liverpool, in 19, I think it was 76. Uh, they beat us by a point. And um, it was bizarre, really, because I just literally 
signed a new contract at QPR after being there for about nearly six years. And um, our manager at the time was Dave Sexton. He moved to Manchester United. And uh, I literally signed the contract. And I got a phone call just after signing the contract, really, about two weeks later. And Dave, uh, the football club, rang me. And a guy called Frank Sibley took over as first team man. He rang me, and not thinking I was ever being set to go for a football move. But the funny thing was that you have vibes as a player that the, the actual team was splitting up. There was a lot of little bit of discontentment, particularly when Dave Sexton left because he was so very well respected as a person as a, and as a coach and as a manager. Um, he left and uh, I got this phone call to say that Everton had agreed a fee with QPR. Would you like to go and talk? So I thought, well, could be a good time to move. So I came up here and I was very, very impressed. The one thing I will say about Everton Football Club, and even though I'm going back now into the 70s, and I've always said, even in the modern game today, that when a player gets transferred, the plays are okay. I mean, Joe must have experienced, I mean, obviously he's managed more than any of us here at the top level, and I'm sure Joe would agree. What people tend to forget is that when a player signs, he goes to training every day, meets his teammates. What people tend to forget are the partners and the wives and the children. And I've always said that if you, as a manager, and if I would ever have been a manager, I'd get a team of people to say, look, make sure the wives know the areas where they want to live, the children of the schooling. And I think that is in, a, such an important factor in football because but, and that's where that Everton football, and I'm sure double Jim, and if, you know, if we ever saw a house, that football club was backed at the time by Little Woods, they sent a surveyor out to the club, and I think how professional that was going back in other football clubs I went to, they wouldn't even know, they couldn't organise nothing like that. So, it's always to me, you had a wonderful secretary in Jim Greenwood, everything was just so, so well organised and here we are today, all of us come back and that's what, as Jim said, it makes a, a special place for us all to come back to and something we will always forget. And there's one guy here, which he'll speak later, Duncan, I'll never forget Duncan because he was very, very good to me when I came up from London, you come back to an area and he showed me on all the areas where to live and it just helps place to settle. And that's a very, very important factor as, as a football club. So Everton was up there with the best like that. And they still are, I'm sure they are. They're very, very well organised. First of all, Paul, it's fantastic to have you with us here um, in the kind of inner sanctums of Goodison Park. Mm -hmm. um, um, your move to Everton come about. Um, can you just tell us a little bit how it came about. Did you receive a phone call? Or did you did you know Everton were interested in signing? No, I had no idea actually, and uh, it came as a complete surprise. Uh, my wife was pregnant at, at the time, and I uh, actually went on holiday. Uh, to a, a place called the Sultan Sands Hotel, which is just in North Devon, and um, we'd normally go abroad. I hadn't told anybody where we were going, so I was like amazed when um, we came back into the hotel and there was a message. Uh, could I phone Jimmy Frizzell, who was the assistant manager at the time? So I, uh, I phoned Jim. He said that uh, Howard Kendall had been on the phone. Uh, the two clubs had agreed a fee. Uh, was I interested? I'd just signed a, a one year extension contract at Manchester City. I was 32 at the time. Uh, I suppose, had I reached 33, then I would have been entitled to a, a free transfer. Uh, so it was good business. It was good business, actually, um, you know, for Manchester City to sell me uh, for about 75,000, I think it was. 
uh, because they had Andy Hinchcliffe, who later came to play for Everton as well. Uh, they had him in the youth team uh, and are ready to take the, the left back spot at Manchester City. So I suppose it was a move that suited everybody. And, and was it an easy decision, Paul? Because obviously, you know, your connection to Manchester City as well, was it hard to leave that? Well, it wasn't an easy decision because uh, I was due a testimonial at Manchester City and. Um, Obviously, if I left and became an Everton player, uh, then you know it, it would have affected the the testimonial game. I, I wouldn't have known whether I'd have got testimonial game. Howard uh, actually said that he would play the first game of the season against Manchester City, and it could be my testimonial. Uh, so it worked out that I was an Everton player when I had my testimonial for Manchester City. You know, so um, but. But yeah, n not a difficult decision at all. I mean, Everton the season before had finished runners up, I think, in the in the league and the cup. Um, a really successful team, a lot a lot of uh, skillful players like I said, Trevor Stephen and Kevin Sheedy, you know, and Sharpie and Inchy and you know, all those uh, good players at the time. It was easy for me to come and and be a part of that and settle in quite nicely, you know. So. Um, yeah, no problem. Definitely. But, uh, what was it like playing in that team? Because obviously that team's regarded as probably one of Everton's best teams. It mm -hmm. must have been a fantastic time to be a part of it. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, the understanding was that I would come as a squad player. Um, as it turned out, Pat Van Den Howe uh, had an ankle injury, which was quite long term. He was he was out for most of the start of the 1986 season. So I played at left back and uh, my first real competitive game for Everton was the um, Charity Shield at Wembley. Like. So uh, a fantastic start. I started quite well, so I think the fans sort of took to me a little bit. If I'd have struggled being a mank, then I would have probably had a hard time, like, you know, but as it turned out, uh, we we kept winning. We were up near the top of the league, and uh, uh, and I played up until just after Christmas at left back. Pat Van Den Howe then became fit, and uh, he he came straight back into left back. And at, the, at that time, Kevin Sheedy got injured, so I sort of moved into left side of midfield, and uh, I ended up playing 40 games out of the 42. Uh, the last two I missed um, when we after we'd won the the, um, the championship at Norwich, I missed the last two games. At, uh, I think it was Tottenham and somebody else at home uh, because I had a knee injury and I wanted to get some surgery on it as, as soon as I could and give myself as, as much time to recover as possible, you know. But it was never really the same after that. And as you said, you're quick to win the Everton fans over. Did you see that as important to, when you were wearing that Everton shirt to have that connection with the fans? Yeah, well, the I think it would have been difficult for me um, had I not uh, won the players over. And I know uh, Phil Neville had a very similar problem when he came from United, and you know, I'd, I, it took him time to settle. Once he realised he was a good pro, and he, you know, he was. Uh, he was working hard for the cause, then you know that's. I think that's what you need to do to win Everton, um, Everton supporters over. And I, I spoke to Adrian Heath, and he said, "Listen, just slide off your feet, put a, slide off onto the pitch. They'll love you more if you do that than uh, you know than if you do anything spectacular with the ball." Like so, uh, and I'd always been that sort of player that you know I was totally committed because I wasn't the most skillful so it was the only thing I could do basically you know so yeah it worked out quite well in the end. Uh, and Paul just really a final point and um, you said you're working at Manchester City now in the academy mm -hmm. centre but do you still get the opportunity to follow and keep an eye on Everton's results? I know you're obviously linked with City now. But yeah yeah. Of course you must keep an eye on Everton. Yeah results. absolutely I mean uh, you know I was um, I was very close to uh, to Ray Hall and well not very close but but I had a long association with uh, Ray Hall and um, and Neil Dewsnip, you know, who who were involved at the academy, and then of course Kevin Sheedy became involved with the academy. So there's always been a link between uh, the Man City and the Everton academies. But yeah, I mean Everton's my second team. You know, uh, a lot of Evertonians won't, won't want to hear that. But I was brought up as a Manchester City fan. Uh, I played for them for like you know 400 games. So. City will always be my first team. I work for them now, you know. So, uh, but but I loved my time at Everton, brief as it was. 
um, you know it was a it's a fantastic football club very very similar to Manchester City in a lot of ways you know because they sort of lived in the shadow of the neighbours for a little while and uh, at that time when I was at Everton obviously Everton went past Liverpool at that stage and they shared a lot of uh, good moments and um, I think I think there was a, a sort of a uh, a nice atmosphere about Liverpool and Everton supporters because they'd both been successful. Yeah. It was different at City because United had been so successful, City hadn't had much success so there was a lot of bitterness there but uh, irrespective of that I, I had, a, had a wonderful time at Everton. Yeah.